Some years ago we got a lot of problems, some challenges on this Lake Victoria. You could uh, get water changing, becoming as cow dung. That told us that uh, the problem here with our water was about the pollution, mishandling of water. Lake Victoria is the world's second largest freshwater lake. It's shared amongst three countries. Kenya with 6%, Uganda has 45%, while 49% is in Tanzania. The World Bank estimates that Lake Victoria provides for close to 40 million people as a food basket, tourist attraction, and a source of livelihood to people across the region. However, activities of these 40 million are affecting the freshness of the lake. In October 2019, a team of researchers from the University of Nairobi collected water, sediments and fish samples from Lake Victoria's Basin, the various rivers that discharge into the lake and from the lake itself across Kenya and Uganda. Currently, there are serious concerns on the status of environment due to linkages between pollution and increased occurrence of diseases. The findings will help us find these linkages and their effects. The results? Shocking. Over the years, the Ugandan government has made efforts to clean up Lake Victoria and encourage sustainable use of its resources. This was due to concerns by stakeholders including fish catchers, processors, traders and government officials that fish stocks in the lake were declining at an alarming rate and this once thriving agriculture subsector would be no more if the decline remained unchecked. 2005 was the peak time for Uganda's fishing industry. However, over the next 10 years, the industry's fortunes turned into misfortunes. The solution to this was the implementation of a tough crackdown on fishing communities around the lake. However, there are other likely causes of the poor fish stocks that have little to do with bad fishing practices. Standing on the other side of Lake Victoria in Kenya, a fishing site that has lost its glory days. We only found one fisherman and from what he was able to get, immature fish and fish that could barely be able to feed one person. Because of dirty water, there is a thing, air thing, in a mwaga chafu sasa kama inato. All this might be linked to what's going into the lake. A visit to River Kagera, the largest river flowing into Lake Victoria, whose mouth is on the lake's western shore in Uganda, revealed how human waste makes its way into the lake's basin. Communities along the banks of the river in Chotera district revealed that it was common for fecal matter to be washed into the lake because there were no toilets in the area. While there was no immediate evidence of direct waste discharge into the lake by industries in Kampala and Jinja, there still remained concerns about the contribution of industrial waste to Lake Victoria's pollution. In order to get a sense of the levels of pollution, water samples were collected from different points at which tributaries joined the lake, other samples were taken from deep into the lake, while further samples were taken from exit points like the source of the Nile in Jinja and other sites like Masese Landing Site in Jinja, the Nachivuwa Channel in Kampala and from different points in Kenya. So we will test the water for microbial contamination that of course will be coming from a sewer and treated sewer for direct uh, discharge. The results revealed a high presence of certain bacteria that indicate microbiological contamination, a lot of which could be traced to fecal matter. 23 of the 25 water samples, 92%, had microbiological elements. While some were harmless, many of them had pathogens that could potentially cause health problems if ingested by humans. It 
It's known that green algae would actually be resulting from uh, very high nitrogen levels and phosphorus, which essentially would be coming from uh, uh, organic waste. Uh, and organic waste, of course, would be generated from uh, human activities as uh, untreated sewer uh, uh, being uh, discharged to, to the water bodies. This is a scenario that is not unfamiliar to many Ugandans that have used the lake. The high levels of pollution also impact the provision of clean water to the people around the lake. According to Andrew Muhwezi, the senior manager of water production at the National Water and Sewerage Corporation, microbiological pollution is the biggest problem they have to deal with when it comes to treatment of the water supplied in the greater Kampala region. The biggest pollutant is what we call algae. You will see a green coloration on the lake. Due to the destruction of wetlands in a bid to reclaim them for settlements, much of what could have been filtered by nature now makes its way into the lake. All over the whole city, water is running into the lake. Now, the natural filter, the wetlands were helping to filter this waste because they have that capability. Now, with settlements, if you go around the lake, you'll see that a lot of destruction of the wetland has, been, has taken place. And certainly this is the bringing in what you can call fertilizers. However, according to Joyce Equiput, the Assistant Commissioner Fisheries, green algae is not present in only one area. Green algae is again, like I say, not resident in, just like you've seen the water hyphen and so on. You may wake up today and find a lot of green algae in a given area. But when the wind direction changes, that algae will be blown to another area. In Kisumu, Lake Victoria is covered with green algae as a result of human activities over time. From the different tributaries visited, there was evidence of waste being directly discharged into the rivers from industries and human activities. According to Professor Peter Anyang Nyongo, the governor Kisumu County, it's time that all nations come together to restore Lake Victoria. It is now our responsibility both as county government and as a national government to embark on a very serious pro pro uh, uh, program of rehabilitating the lake in terms of health and in terms of restoring proper aquatic life. What might seem like a simple disposal of waste by one individual or factory has over time led to the destruction of Lake Victoria. But not all hope is lost. A collective community effort is needed to turn this around through complementing government initiatives. And we must all invest generously, either uh, financially or socially responsibly in protection of this critical resource called Lake Victoria. To ensure that the future generations are able to enjoy this spectacular gift of nature, you and I need to be mindful about what we let into the lake. Rita Kanya, NTV.